Hello everybody, Mike here at Game for Scratch, and Lumberyard Beta 1.14 was just released, and though not chock full of features, it has some very significant ones that I decided that it was worthwhile making a video about. It's going to be a fairly short video, like I said, not a whole ton of features, but the new features in there are very, very important. And the biggest new feature, by far and away for me anyways, is Visual Studio 2017 is finally supported. Uh, and that means that I don't need to keep Visual Studio 2015 around for anything anymore, so I do love that fact. Now, one thing I need you to be aware of right up front, and this is very, very important, is they have a, a setup utility that kind of goes through all the prerequisites that you need to have installed. Unfortunately, they do miss one huge requirement, and this is going to be something that a majority of you probably do not have, is in your Visual and Studio install, you need to have MFC support. Yes, we need to go back to 2007 and add support for a framework that basically nobody uses anymore. And how to do this isn't as obvious as it used to be, so I thought I'd go through that first. And by the way, there's no warnings about this. Basically, you'll create a new project, build a new project, then after 15 minutes of wasted time, get a uh, kind of a non-intuitive error message. So this is why I'm covering this right up front. So to add it, just basically go into Visual Studio support, and I guarantee you, if you did a default install, you do not have Visual Studio MFC support installed. Go into Tools, go to Get Tools and Features. That will then pop up this window eventually. And then what you want to basically do you want to make sure, obviously, that you have desktop development with C++ enabled, at least the majority of features, specifically C++. But then you want to go over to individual components here at the top. And you want to scroll down and find Visual C++ MFC for x86 and x64. Install that feature, uh, let it do its thing, download everything, close out Visual Studio, and then uh, create a new project using uh, Lumberyard. So that one will sync you, and I guarantee you, you do not have this installed because, frankly, 99.9% .9 of the time, nobody uses MFC anymore, so it isn't installed as part of a default. All right, so that out of the way, what else is there in this new installation of Lumberyard? If you don't know about it already, Lumberyard is Amazon's uh, fork. They basically bought a source code license and distribution rights to the Cry, uh, yeah, Cry Engine game engine, um, which basically you know powers a number of games out there. Uh, uh, Amazon Lumberyard now powers um, oh Robert Space Industries. God, why don't I remember the name? Oh, that's embarrassing. Star Citizen. Uh, Star Citizen is powered by Lumberyard. Uh, behind the scenes, this has been used to make various Crisis games, was used to make Rise, Son of Rome. That is Cry, um, Cry Engine, not, not this version. And Amazon have kind of taken it and gone in their own direction. So the primary language you program in, in Amazon is Lua, and then they built their own visual graph system on top. And that's actually one of the areas that got heavy changes in this release. It's so coming here, and it's Script Canvas that got updated. Now, Script Canvas is, again, their visual programming system. Uh, Pretty much, I think every game engine has this functioning now, functionality now, except maybe Unity out of the box. You have to add this through the App Store with them. But anyways, what you do is pretty much flowchart your um, program's execution uh, using a, a you know a network of graphs, and um, it allows non-programmers to add game logic to your game. And what they've added in this particular release is there's two new functions. First off, and this one pretty much makes it useful, is now you can actually create variables. So that's obviously a nice thing. So come in here, let's create a new script. Like so, here's our drawing canvas. And now what I can do is create a new variable here like Boolean, uh, let's call it am, oops, am I dead. Default value, let's hope was no. And then you can just drag it onto here. And then you get a choice between getting and setting. So I'll take with the default value of alive, and we're just gonna get it, like so. And then you've got your, your in and out pins. That's just controlling flow of the program. So basically, you drag a pin off, and that's the next thing that's gonna execute in this particular flow chart. Or we can drag a value off. So if the value is on the right hand side, that is an export value. So now that we have this new Boolean value and we wanna go ahead and do something with it, we can just drag it out like this. Um, and. You know, let's see what's in the math that's appropriate for it. Da, 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 nothing really. All right. Well, you can see the use for it. Basically, you, you interconnect a bunch of nodes together. And the big thing that they've got here is now this ability to actually create a variable. And you've got a lot of all the engine pro provided variables here. Now, one of the things that's cool about this is once you attach this to an actual component, though, um, you can set the values in the uh, over here. Eh, let's not save that. Um, 
So if I've got an entity selected over here as one of the components, if the component that is attached is a blueprint, uh, oops, sorry, I used the wrong name. Blueprint is uh, uh, Unreal Engine's naming. Uh, if they used a script canvas, uh, you can then set the new properties or variables you created here in the rollup over here. So that's some great new functionality. Now, another thing I forgot to mention while I was in there, they also uh, now have bookmarking. So you can, um, just like when you're setting units in a real-time strategy unit, uh, strategy game, you can do quick select. So you could just like zoom into a certain part of your uh, script, do a control and then a number key. So control and one, and it sets a visual bookmark there. So then you can, you know, create a whole bunch more complicated code, blah, 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 and then hit one and it'll jump the screen back to that point. So it allows you uh, some pretty funky tools for editing uh, visual scripts. I'd actually like to see that functionality adopted by everybody else. It's actually a nice nicety that they've added up. Um, the install process for Lumberyard still sucks. Uh, it still takes about uh, uh, five times more space on disk than I'd like it to, especially when um, CryEngine Without Assets has gotten it down to like a one gig install footprint. That's why my drive, my one gigabyte drive, or sorry, my one terabyte drive is now empty, or uh, showing me flashing red. Here is now the size of Lumberyard. So hopefully this is something the Amazon team can work on. I know a lot of people aren't going to care, especially if you solely work with Lumberyard. Like, you know, it's the cost of doing business, but there's no way it should be 36 and a half gigabytes for the same game engine that another company has got down to one gigabyte. So it'd be nice to see this streamlined. Also, the uh, installation process is still kind of awful. Uh, it takes a long time to install this. At least you don't have to go get all the things on your own, but it's still a bit of a pain. Now, going back to uh, Amazon's website, uh, this is the release notes for um, the 1.14 release. You see here the variable manager that I just talked about. So now you can obviously create variables as part of your scripts, visual scripts or script canvas scripts. Um, there's the bookmarking I was just discussing. Another addition they did is a morph target supports for doing things like facial animation. Morph targets, basically you do uh, a set of vertices positions in one spot, a set of vertices positions in another spot, and then you use a morph to uh, blend between the two things. It allows you to do things like, as you can see in this example, facial animations. And then on top of that, the big one again, uh, is Visual Studio 2017 support. Once again, I warn you, you require MFC, nothing tells you that up front, and it's a pain in the butt to discover it yourself. Trust me, I know. So make sure you have MFC installed before you continue. Uh, and then a couple of other things in here, uh, new component entities, including a wind volume uh, component for creating volumes that are affected by wind, sky cloud component for creating realistic and detailed cloud effects, and force volume component for applying physical forces to objects within a volume. There is now a virtual gamepad gem. Think of gems as plugins. I don't know why they call them gems, but they're, they're kind of extensions for the, the library uh, or for the engine itself. And so there's a virtual gamepad for on-screen touch controls. Uh, and then there's a new particle, yeah, particle emitter component for UI editor. As you can see, there is a download link there. You can also get into the much, much more detailed release notes that go through uh, all of the various pieces in this particular release, the different functionality that has been added, but we definitely covered off the big ones in this video. It's awesome to see Visual Studio 2017 support in there. I know it sounded a little negative on the engine. I just find, I wish they'd streamline the process, get things a little bit cleaner, make the build process a little bit faster, make everything just a little bit smoother, because then this engine might actually appeal to uh, indie developers in addition to uh, studios. Because right now, the kind of process is just sort of like the process that a studio would be willing to go through. But compared to the polished getting started process of, um, you know, Unreal, Unity, uh, CryEngine, uh, I, I miss Godot, uh, all of those, you know, you get up and going in a fraction of the amount of effort that you do for uh, Lumberyard. So that's really off-putting for people that are just coming into the engine. But that also may not be the segment that um, Amazon cares about. Anyways, it was actually a pretty significant release. I love the fact Visual Studio support, like I said, is now in there. Uh, that was a big hang up for me to move to this engine because I hate installing an old uh, version when I don't have any particular need for it. Um, the more target support obviously is going to be nice. Improvements to uh, adding a variables to the script editor just kind of actually makes it 
actually useful. So that's definitely a nice development. I'd like to see still also faster release schedules out from Amazon, but you know, I'd like to see lots of things. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. All right. Anyways, that's it for now. That is beta 1.14 of the Lumberyard game engine from Amazon. Uh, let me know what you think of it, uh, in the, of the engine in general, or of this release specifically in the comments down below. Am I being a little too harsh on Amazon on this one, or would you like to see the same changes I'm talking about? Anyways, that's it for now. I hope you all found that useful. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.